Welcome to this week's episode of Hot Boxing Talk, South Africa's very own online boxing talk show. And this week we covered the media day for Simpiwi Konko ahead of his fight for 11th of June against Sia Bonga Sio. As well as having a weekly chat with Hayden and Cyril, this is the Hot Boxing Talk. It's that time of the week when I have Hayden and Cyril by my side and we talk nothing but the pugilistic art of boxing. Let's keep it international. You guys predicted that Tony Bellew would get absolutely annihilated against Lunga Makabu, and what happened? Eh? Well, look, the bookmakers had the same. You know, we, we, he was expected to win, but he didn't win. Tony Bellew got him out there nice and early. He, he didn't win. He got decimated. What happened? I couldn't believe it. But yeah, that's what happens. That's why we love boxing. You know, anything can happen. I mean, you guys both called it, you both thought you Lunga McCall to walk right through Billy. It just shows you, I mean, hostile car, being in that environment, there was no ways, according to the script, that Billy was going to lose that fight, was it? No, 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 it was the, it was the perfect, it was a perfect sequel to his last movie, so yeah. Do you, talking about movies, do you think that knockdown was more of a wake-up call, or do you think, after watching the knockdown, McCall got maybe a little bit too arrogant overconfident see i i feel that makabu has used the same game plan two fights in a row i i, I felt he used that that same game plan against tobiso and you can't just stand back on the ropes and take shots like that against a much bigger cruiserweight so tony tony billy now is the wbc world champion where does he fit in the cruiserweight division well usik i think is the man in the division um and everybody else basically basically falls on him. I, I heard him call out david hay yeah i think that would that would be a nice fight for so I know Hayden's got a man cross on Lusak. How do you think that fight goes with Billy and Lusak? No, 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 it doesn't, doesn't last long. It doesn't uh, last long. No, that, that fight generally doesn't last long. Like, we, we're talking open four rounds there. So you're talking about David Hayden. That's a very interesting fight. David went on Instagram and congratulated um, Tony Bellew. But he also called him out, which was, and he seemed quite angry at that comment that Bellew made about him. How does that fight pan out and in what way should it happen if it does? No, it's definitely going to happen at cruiserweight. Let's make it. Let's make it fair for both guys. If if David Hay can still make cruiserweight, that that's the real question. Um, absolutely great fight for the fans. You're going to hear a lot of talking. You, Tony Billy's management. Where would you steer him for his next contest? David Hay, because the WBC champion had to vacate his championship because of injury. How would he think he have gone up against uh, Tony Billy? Well, that's the thing is, I actually think that that. that Makabu got given a gift by getting Tony Bellew, but uh, you know Gregory Jots was the champion, and going up against Tony Bellew, uh, stop it. I'm going to stay with you, Ilunga Makabu. Where does you go from here? Because it was a shattering, devastating loss, wasn't it? Yeah, he's definitely got to stick to one trainer first of all, and get a string of uh, Ws, and then come back and mount a world title challenge. And keeping a local, we got Zolani Teti fighting this weekend for an IBF Intercontinental, is an international championship in line to fight that. IBF champion? Yeah, Victor Ruiz. So how does that go? Another knockout no, for no. Teti? Yeah, it's, it's basically warming up to the big fight against Lee Haskins. Let's be honest. Teti Haskins, how, how does that fight go? I think that would be a really good fight. I, I would lean uh, more towards Teti. I think Teti right now is the better fighter. He, you know, he's been fighting as a junior bantamweight. He's moved up to bantamweight. Do you think this is his division or do you think he should go back down? No, no, no. Even at bantamweight, he looks very, very comfortable. He should stay. Uh, Chris Sevier won the ABU uh, African Championship on Friday night, beating in the Bibian fight. A good, 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 good fight from him. Yeah, um, we spoke about it last week. Um, Chris has still got a quite got quite a bit left in him, and yeah, I still want I want to see where he goes from here. I hope he keeps going. He's, he looked really good. So I was speaking to Zonke Fana, we we're doing commentary ringside, and he reckons that Soroka would still beat um, Chris Sevier. How do you think that fight goes if it happens? Well, see, now it's more interesting because Sabir's got a lot of wins behind him now. He's, 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 he's riding the wave, the momentum. Uh, Soraka's currently coming off a loss uh, to Indongeni. So, you know, that fight could be interesting. Um, at the moment, you've got to go with the winner, though. You've got to go with Kurt Sabir. Yeah. How, how do you see that fight if it happens? I also think I would go with Kurt Sabir. I think the first fight, um, I felt Kurt had won the first fight. Right, me too. Me too. Um, yeah, I didn't agree with the judge's decision. So I think Gus would take it now, I think he's even more confident in, So if the promoters out there listening, please make the fight happen, make the rematch. The two gentlemen have spoken right here on Hotbox and Talk. Right, and there's a six foot five guy walking around there, you would have seen him, a bald guy with a big shirt. The golden gloves man. Yeah. Six foot nineteen, he's sitting here. 
Hello, Mabel. fight, a close fight, and that's when we realize that how good uh, Sakiri is. Tell us about uh, your preparations for this fight, and are you, are you, are you sure that, or I don't know, there's, there's never surety, but are you confident he's going to win the fight? Uh, let me just thank the powers that be, Super Sports, Empress Palace, um, and of course, naturally Golden Gloves for the opportunity. Uh, I want to thank uh, the relevant people, Kappa, TRV. Uh, Damascus and so forth. Uh, preparations have gone 110% well. Um, we really get up for this fight. Um, life's funny, man. You know, like the last time I was up against him, now he's in my corner, I'm in his corner. Um, I'm really, really confident for this fight. I'm not overconfident, but I, I believe we've had a really good training camp. Um, whatever CEO wants to do in the ring, I was telling another journalist earlier, that if he wants to stand and bang, we've had Maruti Mtolani. If he wants to move, we've had DJ Krill. If he wants to stand and trade and move, we've had Heki Butler. So we've covered all our bases. Um, on the 11th of uh, June, it's going to be 10 and 1, no doubt. Meaning Sia Bong is going to lose his unbeaten record. Your fight with Heki Butler was brilliant. That's when we always knew you were good. I saw you fight a few times down in East London, and I told Berman how good you were. And uh, you were brilliant in the Heki Butler fight. Do you foresee yourself winning this world title? Uh, first of all, uh, good day everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank Kubra's Palace, Golden Clouds, uh, Super Sport for, for having me. Uh, my, my fight with Sia Bonga CEO uh, is going to be a good fight. Uh, Sia is a very talented fighter, but I, I'm well prepared for him. I've prepared so much for this fight. I worked day in, day out morning, afternoon sessions, everything, calling, did everything, come fight night. Now I'm just tired of talking now, I just want to fight. Let them bring see you. I want him now. No more talking. I just want to do the talking and the ring. Boxing is not a talk show. I just want to fight now. <laughs> so it's a big fight for you, so you as you said, you're confident that you're going to take the belt? Yes, CEO is highly rated in, in the world, and I'm also rated there uh, under him, uh, up, uh, on, on the bottom of him in the ratings, but that doesn't matter on me, because he's never faced, he's never, he has never faced a guy like me. Mm. Let him come now. <laughs> Thanks, Pibi. Conker, what do you think of the Super 4? Well, I mean, firstly, I just want to thank everyone for coming out to the Hot Box Gym. Um, friends, family, BSA. Um, I don't think I have any family. My boxing family is here. That's, that's good enough. It's a great concept. You know, boxing has its negativities. Obviously, it's been in the press, well documented. And stuff, but there's a lot of positivities. And I think Golden Gloves having this format of this competition and this tournament brings excitement and people back into the sport. So people are talking not only about boxing, but about this concept. And as you know, Golden Gloves did the Super 8 several years ago, and that was highly successful. And I have no question to think that this is not going to be just as successful. Well, what I think it's this, is that, you know, the minute you have any amount of success, that people are going to be knocking you. And that's just the way life works, unfortunately. People are always going to be throwing stones. And at the end of the day, those people are still going to be tuning in and buying tickets to watch the event. So let them talk. Well, they're talking because they're interested, I suppose. Exactly. <laughs> I've been telling them I'm a bad commentator, but they're not putting the sound off. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to put your sound off. So that's the end of Hot Boxing Talk for this week. Don't forget to catch us next week for myself, Colin, Nomaganjani, Nathan, and Hayden Jones. We will see you then.